Hi, everybody. Alright, welcome to a little bit of this take two. So, in this video, we're all, we're all over the place. Uh, first thing we're going to do is a little bit from chapter 39, which is the landing gear. So, you'd see me putting this bracket on the left side of the fuselage, and now I'm doing it on the right. Alright, this is the one that has the three big bolts across the top, and then three small bolts uh, down the uh, center. And then you didn't get as good of a view in the last on the left side, so we're doing it on the right. And you can see getting that main bolt with that spacer in the wing box is a bit of a pain. I actually had to wound up sanding the end because it was probably half a mil just too thick to even, you know, nail in between the uh, between the wing spars. Total pain. And here I am tightening everything up and using my torque wrench, of course beautiful thing. Once you got all those in place, the next step is actually to, uh, there's some priming involved, which is funny because you never really see that word much in the instructions, but other than in the sentence of, hey, should you wish to prime, now is the time to do it. But yeah, here they're being very specific. So uh, yeah, the next, the, the next steps, it's basically just shove the landing gear up through that hole in the bottom Put another couple brackets on and torque that baby down. Well, you know, once once that landing gear is in, it's kind of permanent, so I can't really do it yet. Uh, I'm gonna have to find another place to put it on, which I'm kind of working on. Hint, hint. One thing that you can see, or you had you had you see, if you back up, you can actually look. You can see where the brake lines are coming through, right? So I've talked about it before. These, we're not using the standard brake lines. Uh, you can actually see the steel braid wrapped all the way back around and kind of sticking into the side fuselage there. Once the landing gear is in place, uh, and we see how it uh, how it lays down, then we will go and cut the line and make the final, uh, or insert the final joint uh, connector for the brakes there. So that'll be good. So that, that can wait. That's not really going anywhere. And here I am applying that thread sealant that I was talking about. You gotta be careful with that stuff. It's toxic as hell. So I've actually got like a big old mask on when I put that stuff on. Okay, and so now that we're done with that, it's time to finish tightening up the other fuel lines. So, again, this is a special plane. It's got a return fuel line. So the normal line, actually, you know, let me, no, I'm not going to do a pause. This, this video is already too long. You can see that there's two, two fuel lines. The bottom one that goes down and then turns downward, that's the regular pickup line that every RV-14 will have, right? That top line is the one that is actually the return line. Vans makes the space inside of those uh, it's, uh, I think it's like compact polyethylene blocks. I don't think it's that. Those uh, black spacers. It leaves a space in there for a return line. However, of course, my return line needs to... Was, I was told to use the same size. So remember, I had to increase the size of them and everything. That's what it winds up looking like. And with my uh, friend Liz here, uh, we decided to... Uh, I said, hey, let's, uh, let's put the canopy on the top. Look at that. Is that not pretty? F***ing A right, that's pretty. Yeah, I was just kind of curious. I had to see what it looked like. Had to, had to, had to. And it's... It's brilliant, if I'm honest. Vans, just, God, it's just... It's pretty, but there... You know what? I really do definitely need some shade on that thing. It's gonna get hot. Alright, but enough of that. We're gonna move and do next is re-securing the pimp light wires. So, just having these wires going out towards the steps is no good. Uh, if you remember, I'm putting some LED lights out by the steps for convenience. Uh, they don't really work, so I'm doing a double wire tie uh, thing to sort of, you know, 
route them. So I'll use one wire tied about a half an inch and then another wire tie attached to that one that's only like you know, an eighth of an inch opening. And then I'm stringing the two 22 gauge wires through that. So wire tie art. Now, like I, look, I told you this is a little bit of everything. Uh, and that's how it is nowadays. I just, hey, what am I working on next? Well, here I am actually wiring up uh, the leads for all of the different flat position. Well, let's see. There's the flat position sensor. It's all the different sensors that you're going to have, right? It's a flat position sensor, uh, aileron trim position sensor, pitch trim position sensor. Those are all going into the Garmin engine analyzer, right? So it doesn't just analyze your CHTs, EGTs, oil temp, pressure, blah, 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 but it also does cool stuff like this. I think mostly because they didn't really have room on the uh, GAD27, which is the electronic control unit, which I don't know if that's, I mean, technically that's really where that should go, but it doesn't matter. It's just another box you got to hide behind the panels, so. So I hope you're having a good weekend, everybody. Uh, next Wednesday, we'll be getting back into the G3X wiring. I know I keep saying that because um, I keep thinking that's what I'm doing, but sometimes it's not because you see stuff like this. But I, I'm looking at the video list now, and we're definitely doing it. So thank you for joining me. See you soon.